Cause you don't even know I can make your hands clap And I can make your hands clap Oh The camera is rolling I'll definitely say this, they know how to come up with some really catchy songs for these dang movies. Hey everybody, this is 22 Tiger Dude here and I'm here to review Despicable Me 3. So Despicable Me 3 is obviously the third installment in the Despicable Me trilogy. The film does have Steve Carell, Kristen Wiig, Trey Parker, as well as Miranda Cosgrove and Julie Andrews. So Despicable Me 3 is about when Gru has to stop Balthasar Brett, but then he gets fired. And after he gets fired, he finds out that he has a twin brother named Drew, who is very rich and more successful than him. And after bonding with Gru, that's when Drew and Gru decide to pull off this heist. Now, to be honest with you guys, I wish I could say I've been a huge fan of this franchise, but to be perfectly frank with you all, I really am not. I liked the first Despicable Me. I really did. It was cute. It was charming. It was very funny funny. It was just such full of personality and I really felt the heart and passion really oozed within that first film. The bond between Gru and the girls is just really sweet and of course the moments with the minions are hysterical and of course Jason Siegel as the villain of the first. He was freaking amazing. And then Despicable Me 2 was a huge letdown. In fact, it's one of the most disappointing movies of 2013 because I was really hyped for that movie. Not necessarily a bad movie. It has its cute moments, it has its funny moments, and heartwarming moments, but all in all, it was a huge letdown. And Minions was also a very mediocre animated film. I'll say, granted, it's slightly better than The Spiggle Me 2. Slightly, I think. But still not saying much because Minions was so mediocre. And now that I've seen The Spiggle Me 3. Oh my god. Oh my god. This ended up being worse than Minions and the second film. Despicable Me 3 is so far the worst Illumination film ever, as well as being the worst in this franchise. Now, like I said, I didn't think Despicable Me 2 and Minions were bad animated movies per se, they were just very underwhelming and disappointing animated movies. And Despicable Me 3 just, it just really sunk. It really makes me frustrated and sad to really see this franchise go downhill. Because I know there's a fan base for this franchise. And for those people that really do hold these movies nearest and dearest into their hearts, I'm personally very happy for you. I'm jealous of you, actually. But I'm honestly just getting sick of this franchise. Now, that's not to say I have nothing good to say. There are some good things I could say about this movie only three. The animation is still very colorful, just like with 2 and Minions, the animation still looks really good. The it's, it's just like what I just said, it's very colorful, it's very vibrant. The background designs, the character designs, it's all still there, it's all still very well done. The opening sequence is a ton of fun, although you've already seen the majority of it from that teaser trailer that I actually really liked. but. You know, in movie form, it was still a lot of fun to watch that entire opening sequence. Sometimes the humor worked. Once in a while, the humor worked. There is a cute storyline dealing with Agnes wanting to find a unicorn. I will admit that was a cute storyline, despite the fact that it ends abruptly. But that is a storyline I actually did find myself 
enjoying the most. And the minions, I actually have to say, I might have found the minions better here than the second film, because in the second film, they didn't really do much for me, but I will give credit where credit is due, the minions actually did give me some genuine laughs, two in particular. One deals with the singing competition scene, I'm not gonna lie, that scene actually had me laughing. And then the other one deals with the scene when they're in prison and they're scaring off the other inmates. It's dumb for sure, but I'm not gonna lie, that actually made me laugh. And about the Sar Brett, I thought was at first an entertaining villain. At first, and of course the voice acting from everyone is still there. And I said what I needed to say about my positives because oh my god, this movie. Like, come on, how many times have we seen this cliched storyline dealing with a twin brother? I'll give the spick only to this. At least they tried to do something. Of course, it didn't entirely work, but they tried something, and I'll give the film credit for that reason. But three, it felt like the writers could come up with something new for this franchise, so they just had to resort to the cliche twin brother storyline, and it is handled so poorly. Pretty much most of the storylines, besides the Agnes a subplot, all the other storylines we follow in this film are just so poorly written, honestly. It's really baffling to me. And of course, Drew, the one thing that was making me really not looking forward to this movie at all is the character Drew, Gru's twin brother. And while I will say he's not as annoying as he was in the trailers, he still really annoyed me. And I still don't care for him. And the movie wants us to really feel this brotherly bond between Gru and Drew, and it is forced. And even Gru isn't as interesting as a character as he was in the first and even the second. It's not that I hate Gru, but uh, he just wasn't that interesting of a character this time around, which really sucks. There's a subplot that deals with Lucy trying to be a mother, which that just felt like it was completely thrown in there. There's another subplot that was really stupid. It deals with this boy falling in love with Margot and trying to win her affection. That was really stupid. Not just that, but it was so quick. And then of course this other subplot is very brief where Gru and Lucy, they get fired from the organization. And then there is this new boss that gets introduced and we don't really see this new boss ever again after that. And then of course there is a subplot with Balthasar Brad. And then speaking of that, I'm very disappointed with how Balthasar Brad's turned out because I'm not gonna lie, for the first half-ish of the movie, I actually did find him very entertaining. And Trey Parker, you know, of course, who's most famous for South Park, he does do a really good job voicing him. You could tell he's adding a lot of energy to the character. You could tell he is having fun at recording studio voicing this character. But by the second half of The Spickle Me 3, this character is utterly obnoxious. And then by the time we get to the final act of the Spin Movie 3, oh forget it, I was done with this character. That was one stupid third act. It's very unfocused. It really doesn't know what it really wants to be the main focus. Yes, even though we're believed that the main storyline of this film is Gru and Drew, there are so many other storylines in this film that it doesn't really feel like there's really a main storyline. Oh yeah, and then of course the minions. The minions leave Gru because they're not happy with him being good now and not wanting to do evil stuff so now we have to deal with the minion side although I won't say it was bad because I did get some moments of laughter from the minions but their storyline just feels thrown in there and not only are there too many storylines but that's just the other problem it just feels like they're thrown in there it doesn't really feel like they add much impact really even with the Agnes storyline the storyline I really found to be the most enjoyable in this entire 
film that even felt thrown in there and how that just ends like I said earlier it ends very abruptly once it ends it's just all like okay what was the point of even adding that into the storyline and something that this film did a huge mistake of doing. One of the bright spots about the first and the second were the moments with Gru and the girls. The bond between them is so cute and so sweet. And the third film makes a gigantic mistake of having Gru and the girls split up. You'll have a moment with Gru and Agnes and it's cute, but they don't really show Gru with Margo or the other girl. Uh, th the fact that they did that really baffles me too because I would think even if I'm not a fan of this third film and I'm really not a fan of this third film, I would think one of the redeeming qualities of the film would be Gru and the girls, their bond. They really took that away and it takes away the heart. And speaking of the heart in The Spigle Me 3, there is very little heart. Very, very little heart. At least the second had enough in there, but this one has so little heart, it really makes me sad because I love going to anime movies and I love it when I can feel the heartwarming moments. I just love when I can feel a bond between characters. And here in Despicable Me 3, because it rarely focuses Gru interacting with the girls, there is very little heart. And as far as the humor, even though yes, I did laugh here and there, I really did not laugh a whole lot. The humor was terrible. And here is the weird thing regarding the pacing of Despicable Me 3. Even though it is so rushed, it, this movie is a mess. This is a gigantic mess of a movie. Despite the fact that there's too many storylines to follow, and despite the fact that they really rush through these storylines without really giving it time to progress, it's ironically a very slow movie. Maybe it's just because I don't find really any of these storylines besides the Agnes storyline, and I'll even say to be fair, the Minion storyline to an extent, to be perfectly fair. But maybe it's because I just don't find most of these storylines very interesting. They're just so lazy, they're so uninspired, they're so poorly written. I just didn't really feel like much effort was put into it. Even the Balthasar Brett storyline, I, I would think that would be one of the storylines that would really engage me. I thought that would make me laugh a lot. And no, by the second half, I was getting sick of Balthasar Brett. Overall, I hated The Spickle Me 3. It's very boring a lot of times. It feels really rushed. The third act is stupid. A lot of things in this film are so freaking stupid. And Drew, even if he's not as obnoxious as the trailers, he still really got my nerves. I really did not care about the twin brother storyline. I did not care about a lot of things that happened in this Big Only 3. I would hope by the time Minions 2 comes out, maybe something will come out of that movie. But right now, I am just losing hope with this franchise. I'm getting sick of this franchise. I get it. It makes money. I get it. It sells toys and all that. But even with it making all the money it makes at the box office, these movies could still try to give us a storyline I actually care about. Hands down, one of the worst movies of 2017. I'm going to give The Spickle Me 3 one and a half out of four stars. So you guys, that's my review of The Spickle Me 3. Let me know in the comments down below what did you think of The Spickle Me 3. Are you a fan of this franchise in general? Or are you like me where I'm starting to get really sick of this franchise? This is 22 Tiger Dude here and don't forget that I will always have Tiger Power! There's something special.